Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. I am Fredicia Leibert. Today is a landmark occasion in that journey of bringing persons with disabilities out of the shadows and into the light. Dr. Glenville Liburd made those remarks as the Empowerment for Persons with Disabilities Summer Camp 2023 was officially opened on Monday, August 14th. The camp is being hosted by Nevis community-based rehabilitation CBR advocates. Dr. Liburd is the founder of the non-profit organization. I came across the concept of community-based rehabilitation to an internet forum. And that experience of researching community-based rehabilitation has taken me halfway around the world and back to see persons like you who have disabilities doing great and wonderful things in Guyana, in Grenada, Turks and Caicos, Antigua, in Malaysia, and other parts of the world where I have been brought into a family of persons with disabilities and their advocates, their supporters, who are not just being hidden away, but they are out there doing great and wonderful things. And it is incumbent on us here in Nevis, where I live, where I born and grew up and reside, to be part of that global community. And so today is a landmark occasion in that journey of bringing persons with disabilities out of the shadows and into the light. Lavinia Wilson is the chair of Nevis CBR Advocates. We decided to come up with a project that would go into the community and reach the heart of the community and create a space where persons with disabilities could come out and enjoy themselves, feel acknowledged, become empowered, and we're so happy to see this come to life. Over the next two weeks, we have so many amazing activities, uh, baking, crafts, field trips. Uh, we have some uh, amazing people who are gonna be doing training in uh, public speaking, um, education, we, we have a free health screening, and we're wanting to just celebrate and acknowledge those persons in our community who are sometimes marginalized, who are more vulnerable, who need the support, and we thank everybody for coming today, and this is the start of something amazing, something that we will be doing on a regular basis going forward, and I'm so proud to be a part of this. The Honorable General Nisbet noted that the Ministry of Health, Gender Affairs and Social Empowerment, which has provided $5,000 in funding support, is pleased to partner with Nevis CBR Advocates. Let us also take a moment to express our gratitude to the dedicated volunteers who have worked tirelessly to bring this camp to life. Your dedication, compassion, and commitment to fostering an inclusive society are truly commendable and inspiring. As we inaugurate this summer camp, let it be a reminder that our society is strongest when it embraces diversity and values the contributions of all members. It is my fervent hope that this camp will not only be a transformative experience for the participants, but also a beacon of inspiration for all of us to continue our journey towards a more inclusive and passionate world. Thank you, and I wish all the participants a memorable and enriching summer camp experience ahead. The Empowerment for Persons with Disabilities Summer Camp 2023 is taking place from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. from August 14th to 25th at the Cotton Ground Community Center. The second annual Teen Emotional Intelligence Summer Camp recently concluded with a ceremony celebrating what the 27 participants accomplished during the five-week period. Running concurrently on Nevis and St. Kitts from July 3rd to August 5th, the program engaged the teenagers in activities that will promote a holistic lifestyle and prepare them for the workplace. 
Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Social Empowerment, Michelle Lybird Rollins, commended the organizers. Out of these five weeks exercises, we, have, we believe that lives have been enriched, outlooks have been transformed, and our community, and particularly this group of young people, is the beneficiary. We at the Ministry of Social Empowerment are thrilled to partner with this organization, and we offer our highest commendations to Ms. Jasmine Brown and her team for conducting this meaningful exercise. We look forward to further collaboration in an effort to continually enhance the quality of life of our young citizens and consequently uplift our country. We will all be better for it. Six of the participants are members of the St. Kitts and Nevis Boys Mentorship Program. John Hanley, a member of the program's advisory board, addressed the August 9th ceremony. We would have been focusing on soft skills and attributes, things like teamwork, empathy, tolerance, patience. In today's world of work, emotional intelligence, I would argue, is just as important as academic importance, and in some cases, maybe even more so. To the camp participants, you have learned a lot of things. You have been exposed to a lot of skills and talents and, and so on. I have heard that you have cooked up some delicious meals and you have done art and so on. I can only imagine that you're going to put these things to very good use. So as you have been prepared for the world of work, as you have been prepared to become productive citizens, I want to thank you for consenting to be part of this exercise and we look forward to seeing great things coming from you as a result of the time you would have spent in this camp. Angela Samuel gave this parent testimonial. I love this camp because it brought out a lot in my daughter. She learned how to cook, so I could ask her to make a little pie. Now and again on a Sunday morning, <laughs> she learned how to be more of a lady. You know, this camp is really to orient the, the, the participants to be role models in their community society and to be role models in their homes and in their classrooms. So, kiddos to you, Jasmine. Hosted by marriage, couple and family counsellor Jasmine Brown, the Teen Emotional Intelligence Summer Camp covers communication, collaboration, self-esteem, self-awareness, perception of self and others, empathy, awareness of others, community service, goals, values, plans and resume writing. On Saturday, August 12th, the 2023 Boys in Ties program officially came to an end with a closing ceremony at the Four Seasons Resort Esquilina Restaurant. The event gave each of the 11 participants the opportunity to share their experience and showcase one of the skills they attained over the program's duration, the ability to properly fasten a tie. Founder of the Boys in Ties initiative, Infatari Hanley, outlined the activities that took place during this year's program. We had our first Thai training sessions, facilitated by Mr. Delvon Clark, who was assisted by Mr. Kenroy Warner and Halley Yankee, who is a past member of the Boys in Ties program. Mr. Clark gave the boys a little history about ties and the different knots that are available. We went straight into the Thai training session and had fun while learning. And I must admit, it was one of my um, best sessions. On day three of the program, we had four seminars and one activity. The first seminar was dubbed, Save Now to Secure Your Future. And the topic was the importance of budgeting. The first facilitator, Mr. Colin Doerr, who is the permanent secretary of finance, captivated the boys with his expertise in the field of finance. On day four, we visited the Carambola, Carambola Beach Club for a dining etiquette session done by Mrs. Daisley Sharp, 
who taught the boys about the do's and don'ts of dining etiquette, and who graciously gave us a tour of the property and insight into the daily operations of Carambola Beach Club. Day five, we had our community day. On this day, we executed a food drive in the St. Thomas's and St. Paul's Parish. In the afternoon, we went into our fifth seminar dubbed Crime Prevention. Mr. Kishon Charles, Inspector of Police of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Task Force presented the topic, Crime and its Impact on Society, and Mr. Alonzo Carti, Inspector of, the Poli Inspector of Police of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force presented the topic, Drugs and Substance Abuse, and its impact on society. I must say, throughout the week, the boys were able to build their communication skills and public speaking skills. To achieve this, each boy was asked to present one of the facilitators and to do a vote of thanks after each session. They were told about their posture, their gestures, the, the, the way they should address people, and the importance of having eye contact when communicating, as it shows courage, confidence, and assertiveness. After each session, they were given affirmations to reassure and commit themselves to being noble gentlemen. The ceremony also featured an award and prize-giving segment which highlighted the participants who displayed stalwart characteristics. Dwije Doe earned the most helpful award. Adonijah Hendrickson earned the most respectful award. Najib Kelly earned the most polite award. Javante Honders Maynard earned the most willing to learn award. Excellence Nisbet earned the most inquisitive award. Jalik Tyson earned the sociably responsible and team oriented award. And Tevan Watley earned the best behaved boy award. The National Planning Committee for Independence 40 is hosting panel discussions which form part of the lead activities for Independence 40. Two of the remaining discussions in the series dubbed Conversations, Reflections and The Way Forward will take place on Thursday, August 17th at the Malcolm Gishad Recreational Park in Nevis on the topic Constitutional Reform. And on Thursday, August 31st, also at the Malcolm Gishad Recreational Park in Nevis, on the topic, Should St. Kitts and Nevis Become a Republic? The panel discussions will commence at 6 p.m. The general public is invited to attend. The panel discussions will be broadcast live on Nevis Television, NTV Channel 99, NevisTVOnline.com, NTV Go App, Nevis Television Facebook page, and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Freddie Silibird. Thank you for viewing.